All right, man, peace. So for those of you brothers who've been on my channel long enough, you know that oftentimes I touch on the WNBA for a myriad of reasons. I think that the WNBA acts as a microcosm of the modern day female Luciferian psychology. Many of the issues that the modern day female has in this society, you can see played out in the WNBA involving delusion and a misperception of what their role is in society and that results in a lack of understanding in regards to why their reality is what it is. So now the WNBA has decided that they're going to opt out of their collective bargaining agreement. And I think that that is going to be the beginning of the end of the WNBA in some way, shape or form. Now they may have to recalibrate the league because I think that the WNBA is essential in trying to push lesbianism because that's what many of these entertainment outlets are really all about just trying to promote Luciferianism. That's why I've been telling you brothers for a very long time that Colin Kaepernick was set up by the Marxists to try to re-engineer the NFL so that the NFL could be used as a platform to re-engineer society. In regards to the WNBA, the NBA has been trying for many years to get people interested in the WNBA, but once again, there is nothing appealing about the WNBA unless you're a basketball nut. There's just nothing appealing about the WNBA. The women are not attractive. The game is not explosive. It's like watching two high-level high school basketball teams. If you're not going to watch the high school basketball championship on television, like the state championship, you're not going to watch the WNBA. Because even the top-level high school teams in a state, they play at a higher level than the vast majority of WNBA players. But just, just to get back to the point, they've decided to opt out of their collective bargaining agreement, which shows you that they have no understanding of their actual worth. One of the great attributes and characteristics that you have as a person is understanding where you are. Because if you don't understand where you are, you're not going to understand exactly how far you have to go to get to where you want to be. Now, because the modern day female has been fed a lot of delusional rhetoric in regards to her place in society and, and in regards to her so-called equal status to men, this is going to influence them to lead with their emotions. And your emotions cannot have any part in any type of monetary or financial negotiations. And it's going to lead them to embarrass themselves. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. All right, let's talk about the WNBA because the Players Association has informed the league it will opt out of its current collective bargaining agreement as allowed by a provision. So the CBA was signed in March of 2014. It runs through the 2021 season. So the opt out, it's not going to affect next summer. But it means the union and the league now need to negotiate a new CBA before the 2020 season, which, by the way, is also an Olympic year. That means that over the course of the next year and change, you're going to hear many of these WNBA players complaining about how fair they're being treated in the negotiations. Because when they sit down at that table and the numbers start getting crunched and their only response is going to be, but that's not fair. And in response, whoever the representative is for the league interests is going to say, it's not about fair, it's about how much money you're making. They're going to be hit in the face with a very, very big bucket of ice water. And th this is why women are not supposed to be in charge of anything in regards to administration or, or any type of leadership functionality. A lot of people are not going to like what I'm saying. I don't give a shit. The woman is beautiful. She's wonderful. But they're delusional by nature. And it's like one of these TV shows where you see the, the, um, the teenager, he's rebelling or she's rebelling against their parents. They feel like their parents are too controlling. They want to have control over their own life, but they have no idea how to administer over their own life. That's the modern day woman in this society in regards to her trying to create this paradigm of equality. And the reason why she's doing it is at the behest of the Luciferians behind the scenes. These people who venerate the mother goddess. A lot of people might think that what I'm saying is far fetched, but a lot of the promotion of super feminism, feminazism and these uh, these female sports leagues and how they're trying to change over the demographics in the corporate world are based off of the veneration of the mother goddess and the quote unquote Wiccan religion that venerates the mother goddess. A lot of these more prominent people are Wiccans, believe it or not, and or Luciferians, really all the same thing. But I'll probably be covering that in another video. But that's what this is all about. 
And the WNBA has gone out of its way to try to market itself as a lesbian's league, or the NBA has tried to market the WNBA as a lesbian's league prior to this season. Even that didn't work because people are just not interested in seeing these big, brawny, mannish females trying to play basketball. Nobody cares. And people will say, well, how come they're more popular overseas? Once again, the only reason why many of these females can go overseas to play professional basketball is because these other countries are looking for a spectacle and they know they, they cannot draw the men. They cannot draw male professional basketball players overseas because the males are getting paid too much money. So the next best thing are to get the women. And just to be quite frank with you, a lot of people are not going to like this. Overseas, they look at a big six foot three, six foot four inch black female playing basketball. They look at her like a man. They don't even view her as a female. So when they go to they, when they go to play overseas in Russia for the for the winter or whatever, that's how they're viewed. NBA Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum, who is now overseeing the WNBA on an interim basis, released this statement: "Quote." The league and its teams are committed to an open and good faith negotiation that is rooted in the financial realities of our business. Now look at what this person, Mark Tatum, just stated. He said the league and its teams are committed to an open and good faith negotiation that is rooted in the financial realities. What is Mark Tatum stating there in a very PC sort of way? He's stating you can say what you want to say on television about what's fair and what you deserve. It's not about what's fair and what you think or you feel you deserve. It's about what the numbers say. Because when it comes down to negotiations, it's about what the numbers say. It's about the interest that you're able to garner. And at the end of the day, like they say, sex sells. That's the bottom line of it. That's the reason why NBA players are dressed half naked or boxers are dressed half naked. Or when you watch a lot of these other sports, they try to push and promote the allure or the sexual aspect of professional sports. With the women, they're always going to try to push the sexual aspect. That's the bottom line. Because one of the core forms of magnetism is the sexual aspect. In regards to the men, it's the alpha male. You understand? When you're a top quarterback or a top player in the NBA, it's the alpha male. So other males watch those sports because they're saying to themselves, that's something that I used to do when I was a child. And they got to a level where they can no longer compete. So they watch greater athletes compete. The women watch because they say, oh, I find this person attractive or so on and so forth. When it comes to the women's sports, the women's sports are never going to be as alluring as the male sports. Because the women do not project that same energy, that same dynamic to other women. Most women are not growing up playing basketball or playing tennis or what have you. So when it comes to tennis, that's why tennis is viewed as an elitist sport. When it comes to women's basketball, that's going to be viewed as a lesbian's sport. So it's never going to be as palatable for the masses as male sports are going to be because male sports will always be this competition to be able to discern who the alphas were on a physical level. And of course, also to create a, a level of attraction for the women. So that's really the dynamics that are being played out in professional sports. And this is why this person, Mark Tatum, stated that our negotiations are going to be rooted in financial reality, not what you wish was true, what actually is true. We are getting to work immediately and are confident such a process can lead to a fair deal for all involved. Now in other words, it's going to be a fair deal for all involved. So once we start to crunch these numbers, you're not going to get paid one penny more in basketball related income than what you deserve based off of how much we're going to have to spend to keep your broke down league going. Now let's hear from the Players Association. They released their statement to the Players' Tribune. Now, brothers, pay very close attention to the statement that was released by the quote-unquote Players Association so that we can understand why so many of these modern-day females are so delusional and it's so difficult for them to understand why things are the way they are and therefore why they should not be in positions of administration. And once again, a lot of people are not going to like what I'm saying. It is what it is. This is WNBA PA president, Neka Ogumake, and she writes, quote, this is not just about business. This is deeply personal. That means that you should not be involved in the negotiations. If it's not just about business, if it's deeply personal, you know what that means? Neka Ogumake is saying, we've crunched the numbers and we know we cannot justify an increase in basketball related income for the players based off of numbers. 
because nobody really cares about this sport. So we have to blame the men in charge because the men are holding us down. This is about the kind of world that we want to live in. Once again, more idealistic delusion. Now, I want to take a look here. Now look at what else she states here, because I'm not sure if they're going to read any more of this article. I am an elite athlete. No, you're an elite athlete for a woman. I'm an MVP, yes, in a women's league that nobody's watching. I am a daughter. What does that have to do with the negotiations? I am a sister. <laughs> I am a number one draft pick. I am a WNBA player, and I am the president of the WNBPA. In other words, she wants to be viewed in the same way as LeBron James. And she's upset because somebody put a basketball in her hand instead of a knitting kit in her hand when she was a child. And now she tried to play the man role for her whole life. And she's upset that people are not viewing her in the same way that they view a man. And I know that what I'm saying is going to get a lot of people upset. It, it is what it is. And that's why I always focus my videos towards the so-called black man. Because females like this, they create their own problems. That's why so many of these females, they're on antidepressants and things of that nature. When you evaluate a lot of these psychological disorders that pervade our society, you'll find that people with gender identity disorder or sexual preference identity disorder, they tend to, to deal with an idealistic world in their mind that they've created in their own mind. And they get upset with having to confront reality. So therefore, they have to uh, utilize alcohol or drugs to try to maintain that false world that they've concocted in their own mind. And eventually that leads to self-destruction. But she says, and I want young female athletes to dream about playing in a vibrant and thriving WNBA. I want them to dream of having it all. Well, look, I'm a firm believer that you have to conceive something to achieve something, but the WNBA has been around for 20 years, 20 plus years. It has not caught on. It's never going to catch on. Once again, when the WNBA first came about, they had their games on, on uh, national television, on NBC. Now they can barely get any play on ESPN or on, uh, on the NBA TV network because nobody wants to watch them. Nobody cares. But once again, you can look at how she starts her article here. This is not just about business. This is deeply personal. So in other words, you're not fully equipped to engage in negotiations because there's not going to be a resolution. You're bringing your feelings into it. Look here, the WNBA players, they are definitely not, we got to clear this up, they are not looking to be paid the same amounts of money as the NBA players. Well, that's obvious. And that's what makes this conversation so ludicrous, just the fact that you had to say that. In order for them to be paid like the NBA players, they have to be making the same money, they have to be generating the same revenue as the NBA players. That's why I make the illusion or the comparison to um, a teenager who's always bitching and complaining about their parents. The first thing that a parent will say is, okay, if you want to live in the real world, go out there and have a job, pay your rent, pay, you, pay your utilities, things of that nature, and then you'll find out what life is really about. The WNBA has been suckling off of the nipple of the NBA for 20 plus years, and they have the nerve to try to bite the hand that is feeding them. And the reason why they're only getting 22% of their basketball-related income is because if the, if the owners were only getting 50%, they'd be losing so much money because they have operating costs. It costs money to open up these arenas and these stadiums to pay these employees that are out there acting as ushers and, and things of that nature. Especially for people who are only buying uh, WNBA tickets for $5 a pop. They're not making any money. This is, this is a total vanity project. NBA players, they are talking about they want a closer share of basketball-related income. Their share of the BRI is estimated, it's not public, by the way, these are guesses, but it's estimated around 22% compared to that hard-fought negotiation we saw years ago. It's 50% for NBA players. But here's another... And see, I, I blame a lot of dudes for this, and this is why I always harp on these guys who are out here raising their, their daughters as sons. You're putting a demon on your daughter and you're not helping anybody. This is why there's so much antipathy between males and females in this society, because women are taught to be to be boys. And now they're trying to raise little boys to be women, to get in touch with their feminine side. And this is creating all these uh, psychological problems for these children. 
Why are you so concerned about trying to get paid like men in basketball? Nobody wants to see you play. If you were concerned with fulfilling your role as a wife and a mother, which is essential, which is crucial and irreplaceable, then you would be worth your weight in gold. You're not worth anything as a basketball player. Nobody gives a shit about no damn Mecca Guma K on the basketball floor. I don't care who gets mad about that. That's why these chicks are out here only getting <laughs> getting paid like secretaries. So-called professional basketball player, you're getting paid 45000 a year. But here's another key point in all of this. The NBA makes a profit. The WNBA, according to the league, I have talked to the league extensive, office extensively about this, according to them, the WNBA has yet to make a profit. So now, brothers, did you hear that? I'm sure that it hurt Rachel Nichols to bring forth this type of information. She says the NBA makes a profit. The WNBA does not make a profit. <laughs> Notice she did not expound on that. Try the NBA makes somewhere between five to seven billion dollars a year in profit. The WNBA makes no profit. OK. <laughs> That's like trying to compare a Fortune 500 company to a lemonade stand. Profit. So when you talk about basketball related income, you also talk about how much you're spending and what the net is. Thank you. That's the first time that I've heard you mention that. I've been talking about that now for a year. They talk about basketball related income. How could you have 50 50 and basketball related income when the owners are the ones who have to handle the operating costs? Chauncey, do you understand why there's kind of a disconnect and frustration on both sides here? Now, listen to what Chauncey Billups has to say here. And this is why I use that word simp when it comes to most of these modern day males. Uh, you men are the cause of your own frustration when you start to bitch and complain about these women. You men are the cause of this. And when I say you men, I'm talking about the sense. I'm not talking about all you brothers. I'm talking about the, the men who are weak and who want to help the woman maintain her delusions. As opposed to her fulfilling her role, which once again is necessary and crucial. But listen to what he had to say here. This brother Chauncey Billups is willfully lying because he knows that he can't speak the truth or he'll get fired. I do. I do. Um, and I'm sure they'll get it figured out. Mark Tatum, I was just going to do a terrific job. But... I think the WNBA Players Association is absolutely right. And it doesn't matter to me that they haven't turned a profit. Of course it doesn't matter to you because you're not footing the bill. <laughs> that type of grown ass man says in business negotiations, it doesn't matter to me that they haven't turned a profit. That's Chauncey Billups' way of saying, you know what? I know where my bread is buttered. Remember, the NBA had this campaign and still has this lean in campaign for women. Because they're all about business and the NBA is all about being woke and being Luciferian. Talking about lean in where they have all these players on these commercials talking about lean in for this and lean in for that for women and their hardships. Why is that? Because once again, they're trying to get attention for the WNBA. And they're also trying to attract more of a female fan base. If you pay attention now with many of these NFL commercials where they're trying to promote the NFL. The new thing now is to have these women walking around in the commercial with an NFL hoodie on. Or these little girls sitting on the couch with their parents making rough faces because they're trying to, to masculinize these little girls. And Chauncey Billups is scared to death that he's going to get fired if he speaks the truth. Which is that you can only get paid according to the money that you generate. That's the bottom line of it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. There is no debate about it. When they do, they deserve a bigger share of the basketball-related income. Mm -hmm when they do what does that mean chauncey billups do you know if the revenue is trending upward or not or are you just talking shit mm -hmm. and we've seen it in our game you know um and it's made obviously both sides really happy and healthy so uh. right but you know the difference uh chauncey billups the players understood that they were getting paid according to the amount of money that they generate and they were not asking for exorbitant pay raises based off of delusion for the most part, NBA players were not getting paid buco bucks until the late 80s and onward. Most of the players in the NBA were not even getting paid seven figures. That's why it was such a big deal when Magic Johnson signed that 25-year contract for a million dollars a year back in like 1982. Because it was known back then that you only could pay a couple of guys in the NBA. Now Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were, were involved in the transformation of the NBA. But everybody knows Michael Jordan didn't really start to get paid until like 1995, 96, somewhere around there. Um, I'm a big fan of WNBA. I like watching those games since, since, since the onset yeah. you know, of becoming into the league. But 
I think that they'll get it done, and I hope they do, and I'm sure they'll get a fair deal because they deserve one. And I agree with Neko Gumake. Look, it's not... Of course you do, because you're another dude scared to lose your job. Once again, brothers, it's about telling the truth. You have to tell these women the truth and let the chips fall where they may. And because so many males today are scared to speak the truth because, oh, you know, we might offend this woman or that woman. The woman needs to be offended with the truth. If she's offended by the truth, then that means the truth is not in her. And she's not worth your time. People need to be traumatized by the truth as long as it's constructive truth. If you're truly concerned about the woman, you'll tell her the truth. We don't need you on no damn basketball court. We need you in the home, being a good wife and a mother. That's your job. Not running up and down no damn hardwood trying to chest bump with your athletic sports bra on. You know, trying to bang together your two teardrop titties. Nobody wants to see that shit. Got tattoo sleeves and, and dreadlocks with, <laughs> with honey blonde tips on it on the end. And black gums for smoking weed all damn night with your lesbian lover. Ain't nobody trying to see all that. Or, or have that type of energy when they're watching a the game. If, you, if you're watching females in sports or athletics as a man, you want to see females that are attractive. That's what you want to see. I mean, and that's just the bottom line of that. A lot of people might not like it. It is what it is. Not just about business. Mm -hmm. It is about the kind of world we want to live in. And whether they're making money or not, we've got to find a way to promote women's sports so that they get a chance to be in the public eye. So in other words, we're going to try to use mind control through commercials and videos to make sure that people feel like they should want to watch women play even when they don't. So people are not allowed to like what they like anymore. They have to be guilt tripped into watching the WNBA. Because most of these modern day Luciferian or liberal women, they're so bored out of their gourd that they have to copy men. And I've, I've touched on this in the past. So many of these modern day women, they claim to be so secure within themselves. But if you pay very close attention, they always want to copy a man. That's how you know that the man must be the source. He must be the original. Because the woman is always trying to copy the man once she's been convinced that being a woman is not good enough. Once again, a feminist is just a woman who does not feel that her feminine aspect is strong enough. So she has to try to usurp the masculine aspect. The feminine aspect is extremely powerful, but you have to, you know, you have to embrace that. Just like the masculine aspect is powerful, you have to embrace that. If you're running around trying to outdo a woman, then that means that you must not be comfortable in your own masculinity. That's why I tell brothers, you're not supposed to go back and forth with the woman. About what? So they get a chance to make a profit. The NBA makes plenty of money. Let's put more money into it. Let's treat these athletes as the elite athletes they are. I'm with her all the way. And I think the NBA will at least come a long way toward what they want. And I, and I think you talk about marketing the league and exposing people to it. I think that NBA players do probably as good of a job of anybody of showing tremendous respect for it. They, you know, you know they're fans of the game. You'll see NBA players in the summer at games. They'll bring their families with them. You'll see them interacting with star WNBA players. And that I think that has... Yes, the NBA players, they respect the skills that many of the WNBA players bring to the table, but also understand that many of these NBA players are Luciferians, meaning what? Do I believe that they worship Bacchus and Pan? Some of them do, but just on a lower level, most of these guys are raised in these households surrounded by feminine energy. They're accustomed to seeing females trying to do male roles, and a lot of them are trying to raise their daughters in the same way. So most of these guys, you can't trust them to be the, uh, the standards of of understanding in society. They're just athletes. Has helped uh, elevate the standing of the game and maybe opened it up to an audience that maybe wasn't going to be as accepting or hadn't given it a chance because if you watch that league at all, you know the quality of play is outstanding. I remember Rebecca. No, the quality of play is outstanding for women. And that's what a lot of these guys are just not getting. <laughs> the quality of play is outstanding for women. If you're not willing to sit down and watch two high-level high school basketball teams play. Why would you sit down and watch a WNBA game? That's why I say the WNBA is for basketball nuts and lesbians. It's just a fact of the matter. Rebecca Lobo talking about this. When she started in that league, it's like it wasn't a very good quality of play. Doris Burke will tell you that sure. when she was covering it. But it is now, and listen, it, it takes time to grow a professional league. And 
um, while it feels like it's been around a while in, in the context of history, it's still a pretty young league. Yeah, that's the league has been around for 20 plus years. The women can't dunk. There's no explosive plays. It is what it is. Absolutely. And look, what the players, what they want, A, a bigger share of basketball-related income. And, and Francis, you're right. Look, you look at that gulf between the NBA players. Mm -hmm. The other thing I, I hope that the WNBA players are asking for is, how are you going to market us going forward? How are you going to get us profitable? Where are you going to put us? Because they are going through... Well, at this point, after 22 years, there's not that many different ways to skin a cat. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to reinvent the wheel. Like they said, you could put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. How many attractive players do you have in the WNBA? I mean, there's only two things that sell in regards to professional sports, and that's either sex or that alpha male energy. And the WNBA has neither one. They have neither one. So what are they going to do? They're going to put uh, Maya Moore and Candace Parker on television and try to sexy them up? Is that what they're going to do? Going through a leadership change. Mark Tatum stepping in right now as the as sort of the, the interim commissioner, but they're going to need to bring a new commissioner in there. And if I was a player in that league, I would want sort of a voice and to say, how are you going to get us to this point? If you're telling us this is a problem, you're not making a profit, how are you getting us to that point? Because our product is good. We're doing the work. And I'm. No, your product is not good because it's not selling. At the end of the day, you can have a hamburger stand. You can make the best hamburgers in the world, allegedly. But if the hamburger is not as good as you're saying, and, and if you have your hamburger stand set up in a community where everybody's a vegetarian, you're wasting your time. I'm looking forward to seeing that discussion as well. All right. Well, I'm sure that you're all going to look forward to seeing that discussion because you're going to get your feelings hurt just like everybody else who's living in the real world. So peace.